Hello everyone and welcome again to another episode of M365 Voice. My name is Mike Marani. I'm Sarah Hazi. And I'm Antonio Maya. And we are ready today for another question from the jar. All right, are you ready? Ready. Yeah. Here we go. <clears throat> Is there any way that we can automate the application of metadata to documents in SharePoint Online? So automated metadata for documents in SharePoint Online. The answer is yes. 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 Of course we We've talked about something similar before. We talked about the, import or the relevancy of content types and metadata to SharePoint. Yeah, and I think I think we we concluded at that one that there it is still very relevant metadata content types. Absolutely, still important to information architecture and how we organize our info. Mm -hmm. This one's an interesting question because, like, in the last couple of years, I've done a lot of records management work, and I've been surprised that I've heard from records managers who, you know, a lot of a lot of applying record retention capabilities, retention labels, all of that in SharePoint. Um, is done through metadata, right? Because you're you're trying to get people to identify what kind of documents these are so that you can appropriately apply the right retention period to them. And the vast majority of record managers are just kind of fed up trying to get people to assign metadata to documents. I, I, I've been amazed at how much I've heard them say people just don't want to assign metadata to documents. Well, it's been a problem, I, I think, since SharePoint 2007 or SharePoint yeah. 2003 days. It's always been one of those big challenges. Do we want to maybe think about this like easiest to most complex ways or yeah. simplest, simpler to more complicated ways to think about um, automatically applying metadata? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that, that's a good way. Yeah, because I think that that kind of reaction lends itself to this question of, well, we, we still need metadata. But people don't want to apply it. We kind of recognize that. So, what are the ways that we can automatically get it? Okay. So, so first so on the list, we do have some metadata that comes in automatically that's applied to documents, and it's pretty limited. But it's based on who created it originally. So, did Mike create it? Did Antonio last modify it? And then we have a created date and a last modified date. That you get out of the box and it automatically detects who the people are. So that's kind of your most simple method. Please don't create manual metadata columns in place of those automatic data collectors. That's right, that's right. And there's there's a few of them there that kind of get enabled when you start using certain features. So there is a sensitivity metadata column that you can display and it will, um, you know, if you've enabled integration between SharePoint Online and MIP and, your labels are of a certain configuration. It'll actually pull out that that sensitivity label you've assigned to a document and display that in the metadata. So that comes in automatically. Yeah, yeah and you can also do uh, that was a famous one, and I've used it many many times. Is the default fields that you can put on columns in the library columns. Yeah. Uh, you can do it at the actual library level, and you can do it at the folder level. So even though if you have that structure, or you have some folders as well. Uh, you can take that and define specific metadata default values at that level, and you can automate that kind of thing through scripts. If you have, if you deploy a big information architecture for a lot of documents, libraries, and folders, and you have it preset, uh, you can definitely um, automate it through some scripting, so you don't have to go and click on each one of them because it is pretty painful and it is slow actually. If you do it through the UI, it is not as fast as you think. Yeah. But it really helps, and you don't have to worry about the users doing it. And I've done it a few, few times, and it works really, really well. And I've checked on one client a few years after, and they were still using it. So that is a very good way to do it. And I've used it before, too, when I'm going to be dragging and dropping a large volume of documents over to SharePoint, where I'll set up default values and then go and grab a huge batch of files upload them to SharePoint, they get the default values, then change the default values, drag and drop another big load. It's an efficient way to be able to kind of bulk load in. Um, yeah. And all you have to do is change the metadata once for each set of default values and you're good to go. That's a great idea. I hadn't thought of that when you're bringing in large amounts of content. Yeah, that's handy. Um, to build on, on that, um, you can also use um, document sets that have some extra capabilities for metadata where um, if I apply metadata value to the document set, I can configure it so that it synchronizes that data down to the documents within. 
So that's another feature similar to the folder one, but um, uh, you can have it different on different document sets within a library and have that synchronization happen or not happen. Yep. And similar to that one is using content types with default metadata configured for each content type. And yeah. then all you have to do is apply the right content type or change the default content type for your library, drag and drop documents. It will auto apply to that content type, then switch your defaults and again, drag it. You can tell I do a lot of dragging and dropping in bulk. Yeah. Yeah, and I want to just uh, tap into what, what you said before uh, through uh, quick edit as well. Uh, we can. You, if you're doing a bulk upload, you can do that as well and just go and drag and drop uh, the files and just drag the actual metadata values from one to another. That's that, right. that is a quick way to do it. It's not really automating, but it kind of it's a quick yeah. way to do. Yeah, it behaves very much like Excel when you grab that little that little button on the, the bottom of a field and drag it down and it applies it. I've used that many times. That's actually really handy. Um, in that quick edit, it's been around for such a long time, right? Because we had the data sheet view back in SharePoint 2007, but they've really improved the way it works. It's more responsive. You can use it now for person and group fields and a wide variety of field types. So it's very helpful. Yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I remember a couple of years ago building a, um, a user onboarding system to SharePoint. We had to onboard like 6,000 users onto SharePoint and um, into Office 365, actually. And we used a list in um, a SharePoint site to designate the user and all the attributes we needed to onboard them. And we had built some onboarding flows. And when it came time to actually do the onboarding after we had built our, our Power Automate workflows and built out the list appropriately, we had to onboard the users in batches. And using that, that that bulk, um, sorry, that, that quick edit view was a godsend because it was like, okay, I got a bulk, I got to onboard 500 users and I bring some of them by copying and pasting from an Excel spreadsheet into there and then setting a couple of values and dragging it down. Um, it, it was amazing. It would have been a lot more difficult if it hadn't been that that nice to use. Yeah, yeah. and and with, with, with that, uh, today's world, you can import. You could have, like, if that functionality was was available two years ago, you could have imported that, imported a list from, from an Excel, and it's yeah. going to create all the columns for you. It's going to do all the actual metadata automatically and import all the data. So that's right. That's, that's right. Cool Featured as well. Yeah. Another way to bulk apply metadata is um, now with your modern libraries, we can actually select multiple files um, or documents within a library. And then in the information panel, I can actually select a metadata value and it will apply to all the documents that I have selected. Yeah. And that's such a simple I love feature. that. Oh yeah, it's it's also super handy. And when that was introduced, like, oh my, oh, how, why didn't we have this? We've only really been needing that for a decade, but yeah. thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's, that's another method. Um, again, it's kind of a bulk way, not necessarily an automated way. Mm -hmm. um, others? One of the things that I used to do, and it's a bit of a, um, a kludgy way to do it, but I remember back in SharePoint 2007, even you could do this, where I would create a button um, on the main page of a SharePoint site, and usually several of them based on different types of documents, like upload a an SOW or upload a candidate resume or a CV. And when you click on the button, it would just have behind the scenes kind of an embedded link that would direct them to a specific content type in a document library with default metadata values. And I found that that was an easy way to do it because if they didn't have to navigate to the right library, if we could assume based on them taking the action of clicking a button and then assume a bunch of things about the document, that was an effective way to help get people to tag documents with metadata without realizing that that's what they were doing. They just thought it was a shortcut to upload. Cool. Yeah, you took me back actually to a few years ago as well. I used that similar feature in the out of the box if you've used the document routing capability with a drop off library. Yes. Where you just have so many content types. Yeah. And then all the users have to do is select what kind of document it is. And you can have some default metadata value as well. But the minute you just say OK, it takes that document and it sends it to the it right document it. library with the right yes. metadata. Yeah. Uh, so I love that feature. Yeah. And it worked so well. I yeah. mean, it was like a Great big, huge, massive SharePoint sorting machine for documents, but it worked very effectively. Yeah, yeah, no, that was a cool feature. Um, I haven't seen it used in a very long time, though, the drop-off yeah. library content routing. 
I assume we still have it in SharePoint Online. I just I haven't seen it utilized. Yeah. Yeah. The last time I used it, SharePoint Online before modern world about four or five years ago, and it's, it's still working. Yeah. Um, another way to bulk apply or automatically apply metadata. So um, I like to think of retention labels on documents as metadata sometimes because they do tell us something about the document. So there's a couple ways to do that automatically. Um, one, libraries can be configured with a default retention label. So any document I put into it can receive that retention label uh, at the library level. Uh, then also if I apply a retention label to a folder and I put a document within that, that retention label gets assigned. And then finally with retention labels, there are auto apply policies where I can configure a policy that looks at existing metadata and then iterates through my documents and based on a, a keyword query language string I put in, it'll find some combination of meta documents, some combination of metadata, and then assign a retention label to that. So if you think of retention labels as a form of metadata, those can be automatically applied through those. Exactly. Very cool. Um, what about fully automating that, the whole thing, not relying on some metadata that exists um, SharePoint syntax, I guess, I think about the one that um, it is the most, I, I'm, I'm so excited and I love, I love it the way it works, that you can configure your content types, you can configure your model, you can train the actual documents. Mm -hmm. And then um, once you train them and you publish your model, once you drop off the document into the SharePoint library, it will automatically understand that document. And, um, and then we'll apply the metadata and the content type. Yeah. It's really the wave of the future. So that ability to use the machine learning and the AI to be able to automatically detect. And I love that. I mean, the first thing that happens with the document understanding model is it tries to detect the content type, right? Um, and then once it does the content type, then you can have default metadata applied, but then you can have these extractors. I think that they're entity extractors, right, Antonio? Yeah. That you can literally teach the model like in a statement of work, where and how and what the total SOW dollar value is and have it go search for that and then populate it in a metadata column in your library automatically. And it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it is actually really good. You've got those two different ways to implement it as well. You've got document understanding models and then you've got form processing models. And they kind of, they both have their pluses and minuses in different circumstances. Uh, but they both give you this really interesting way of extracting metadata from your documents. And then the really cool thing for me too is, is when you've got a real business process that you want to apply that to, that metadata can then be used to automate parts of that business process, right? Like you can think of the example that you raised, Sarah, of you know, you've got a contract and you extract the dollar value, that can then trigger an approval workflow that yeah. sends that contract to someone else for approval if it's over a certain dollar value, for example. Like it's a really and, simple example, but. Right, and assigns it to a different person in a person and group field based on the dollar value or even what business line the SOW is for in the organization. So you can incorporate Power Automate workflows in there as well. Of course, okay. you can do that without needing syntax, but marrying and layering these capabilities together is even more impressive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and today's world, everyone lives in, in, in teams. And we know that you drop your documents in teams and you have no way for you to actually flag them, flag the documents and, and assign metadata to it. So asking the users to go into SharePoint, so I have to drop it out of the file in the files tab, go into SharePoint, click on the file, find it. If I don't have any automations in the back end, the users are not going to do it. So. Uh, yeah. SharePoint syntax is an awesome way just to eliminate that hurdle that organizations are suffering in today's world to yeah. apply the data if they are working in teams only. But it's exactly. so important for organizations to think about that strategically, especially from a price point perspective, right? Because machine learning and AI and using syntax to be able to um, automate some of those capabilities, especially for documents that are stored within teams or uploaded to a channel in teams, so wonderful, but you're going to pay per user per month additional pricing over and above your E3, your E5, whatever plan you have for Syntex itself. And you can't do that for just the people creating those models. Any user who uploads to Teams or a document library or anywhere, 
that you want it to automatically detect and apply the metadata, they'll have to be licensed for syntax. So it's going to be expensive. So you should plan ahead. That's right. And that's kind of what I was I was thinking about when I was saying you kind of have to have I find you have to have a business process in mind that you're going to apply it to because that mm -hmm. helps to justify the price point. Right. If you understand what the outcome is going to be, the outcome can't simply be from my experience, at least the outcome can't simply be I just want to extract metadata from these documents and we'll figure out what we do with that metadata later. It's got to be OK, I've got to accomplish this business objective or this goal and it's got to go through this process. But how am I going to automate that so people don't have to do all this manually anymore? And the metadata, I think, is the key of that. So I, I can't remember if it was you that said it, Mike or Sarah, but layering these capabilities on top of each other to achieve a business objective, I think, is the way that you justify that. But I look at it, I'm just going to comment a bit on the pricing point. Uh, yes, it's not cheap, but if there is an organization that has tons of data, and they want to apply metadata to it. So they've already gone through working with teams and have uploaded tens of thousands of documents and they have not flagged them or tagged them as in metadata. Then if you want to do it manually, it's going to cost you a lot more than $5 mm -hmm. per user per month to do it. Mm -hmm. so I know there's some still work to do to plan it and do the actual automations, but I think if you do the math, it might be cheaper to go the SharePoint syntax rather than go and fix the existing data and try to tag your existing data manually or through different processes. And I think it's important to note, and this is kind of getting off of the core uh, question for this podcast, but it's, it's important to note <laughs> in your organization, what is the key to getting the funding that you need for the capability that you need? Because syntax also has other capabilities like optical character recognition and being able to OCR scan image yeah. files attached to your emails. Do you need that for security and compliance? Syntax has it. Is that something that will win the day for you in terms of pricing? And then look at what you can do in addition with Syntax, which is the automated metadata scanning. I think sometimes you have to really think about what's going to be compelling from a cost and a cost fulfillment model in your company versus then what you want in addition. Yeah, content type push. That's another feature that comes with uh, mm -hmm. Syntax, right? That's that's not available with the regular content type hub mm -hmm. that does require Syntax licenses. I think some of the advanced, I could be wrong on this one, some of the advanced term store features um, also, um, I think also require Syntax. Mm -hmm. So yeah, understanding all the capabilities that come with it and what's gonna win the day, as you said, I, I think, um, Understanding that and mapping that to some sort of business objective you want to achieve, right. like that helps you to justify that internally. I think so. Well, that was a really uh, love the topic, actually. It's just something that I work with all the time, metadata and content types. Uh, so if you want to summarize what we've talked about, so we've talked about the out of the box uh, metadata that comes with documents. So you, every time you upload a document, you got the basic metadata for the author slash editor and the dates. Okay. What else we talked about? Uh, default. The default ones, the default values and columns, the document, document sets. sets, content types. Yeah. Bulk editing metadata field yeah. values. Mm -hmm. um, default retention labels and automatically applying retention labels. Mm -hmm. We talked about Power Automate. Well. Power Automate, you've done that before. Yeah. And syntax. Syntax. A lot of options, a lot of options to automate your metadata. So good, good topic. Thank you, everyone. It was always a pleasure having you both. <clears throat> See you next time. Thank you. Bye.